What's up, happy people? Welcome back to Embroidery Hub. My name is Willie, and today's episode will be like no other. Literally, there is no episode out there that will cover in such detail what I'm about to cover today. So listen up. Today, I'll be teaching you how to embroider the front of a split front baseball jersey using only your embroidery machine. Although this was one of the most difficult projects that I've done on this show, I've been able to master this process and can now show you the simplest method to creating this impressive design. You don't need to use a vinyl cutter, a laser machine, or even a sewing machine. Just your favorite embroidery machine. Mine being the Recoma MT-1501. Oh yeah. Remember, there are two parts to creating this awesome design. Number one is the digitizing. And number two is the actual embroidery and hooping, both of which I will cover in great detail here in this episode. So what are we waiting for? Let's play ball. All right guys, now let's go over the digitizing portion of this project. For this project, I'm going to be using Chroma Lux, which is our software. If by any chance you like what you see after this video, go to recoma.com you can have a free download there or you can simply scroll down to the description below and you can click on it. You'll find a free download there as well. All right, so before I get started, I'm gonna go over to a different website. This website is basically to find the correct font that I want to use for this project. So I went through a couple of them and I ended up choosing this one here, which is called Krinkas. All right, so now that we have the font, let's start digitizing. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to my text tool and I'm going to click on my screen and now write the name that I want to use. So in this case, we're going to use Recoma and I'm going to add the little swoosh, which is a number seven. I'm going to press apply, but to be able to use that font, I need to use my true font text option, which is this check mark with the TT option. Just click on the box and this page will come out. You have all the fonts that you have saved onto your computer, not just the software. And now I'm just going to make some small edits to it. So for example, I want to uh, take off the top of the R a little bit. I don't like how it kind of stands out. All right, so now let's put it to the size that we want. So let's go ahead and grab our jersey. So let me get my measuring tape and I'm going to measure from the top button to the bottom button. And as you can see here, we have about four inches and a quarter. So that's about the size that I want my design to be. Let's go ahead and make our design four and a quarter on the height. So I'm going to grab my guideline, going to drag it over to the center of that X. All right, and now I have the center of my design. So let's go ahead and grab the whole design and convert it to an applique stitch. So let's grab our jersey again and let's measure out the gap that's going to be overlapped, which is gonna be this area here. So we're gonna grab this and I'm gonna measure on the width here and it's about, it's about one and a quarter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a guideline for ourselves of one and a quarter on the width. So to make that guideline, I'm going to use the artwork tool and I'm going to use a rectangle. So for the width, I'm gonna put one and a quarter and press apply. All right, so let's make the guideline into a different color so we don't get confused. I'm gonna put it in red. Go ahead and align it right in the center. And there we go. So now let's go ahead and start making some edits to the actual uh, font. Now let's put it all together. So I'm going to select everything but the R. I'm going to right click and I'm going to select combine. All right, so now what I'm going to do is create an outline all around this font so that I can have that as the background applique for this project. Just right click, we're going to go to utility, create an outline, and I'm just gonna give it about uh, 0.2 inches of space in between the font and the actual outline, it looks about right. So now what I'm going to do is get the same outline and convert it into an applique. Okay, so we have the outline. Now let's change the outline's color so we don't get confused. Now what we have to do is split the design in the areas where it will still overlap. We want to make sure we don't mess this up. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to copy this design over to a different page and start working on the other page instead of this original one. Let's open a new page and let's paste it over. 
All right, so let's start off with the border since this is the easiest part. And remember, we are trying to overlap an inch. So to do that, we have to be selected on the border and also selected on the shaping tool. And now we're going to zoom in to the right side of the guidelines that we created as much as we possibly can. And where our guideline meets with our border, we're going to right click and add a point. Now these points, I'm going to make them line points so they can go straight down. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other side now. All right, so what I'm going to do now is delete all the points that I don't need. So I'm going to left click outside of my design and just highlight all the points that I'm not going to use. And just select delete. And as you can see, we have one nice straight line. Basically, whatever is going to get overlapped with letters, we're not going to use any border for that part because we're going to create that line for that part with the letters and its own different color. So let, let me show you how to do that. So let's go ahead and zoom in here and just add a split line right here and add another split line over on this side. And now we can delete the part that we're not going to use, which is going to be here. Now we're going to keep going. We're going to do the same thing over here. Okay, so now we can do the same process to the letters. So let's do that now. Highlight the ones that we're not going to use and delete. All right, so all we have to do now is create a border for this swoosh. All right, so the only thing we have to do now is have the border of the background in the back and the letters in the front. Right now is the opposite, but that's very simple. All you have to do is just click on the border and send it to the back by selecting move to the back option. All right, so now that we did everything the same to this part of the design, I'm only going to change one thing. And it's not really change, it's more of add. I'm going to add two points that could get embroidered, but we do not want to embroider them. All we want to do is to have them so that once we trace, we have the same size of tracing all around the design. So I'm going to use a run stitch, and I'm just going to put it anywhere right now. And I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom one on the top and one on the bottom. Now let's grab both of these and let's put the height to four and a quarter. Just like we did with the other part of the design that we made it four and a quarter height. So that's the same thing we want to do here. Now we're also going to group the two dots so that they don't lose the position. And now we can select the two dots and the design and use the vertical aligning tool to have it right in the middle. So now it's going to recognize this design the same size as the other design. So when it's tracing, it's going to trace at four and a quarter inches apart from each other. Now you do have to make sure that you put a stop to that step. Now to do this, I'm going to change it to a totally different color so that I know my last step is going to be those two dots that I don't want to get embroidered. All right, so that's it for the digitizing portion of this project. So let's go downstairs and let's see how it comes out. Oh my God, it's Willy. Oh my God, we love your videos. They're awesome. Don't forget your jersey. Oh my God, thank you. I totally forgot about this. And what would I do without my fans? All right, I feel the energy. So let's go and get started. All right, guys. So here we have our tearaway stabilizer. Now this is one sheet, but I'm going to double it up, okay? So I have one and two. Now let's get our hoop and let's open it. Now we're gonna get our stabilizer. We're gonna put it right on top of the bottom piece of the hoop and we're gonna get the top piece. Now this is the magnetic hoop, so be careful with your fingers, okay? I usually like to put my hand across, start from the top and then kind of straighten it out, okay? Now let's go ahead and put this inside of the machine. All right, so we have the hoop already in the machine. Now, the first thing we have to do is press start. The machine will do the trace stitch first, and then we can go ahead and put the jersey right on top. So let's go ahead and press start. Okay, so now let's get our jersey. Let's open it up. And since we're doing the right side first, we're gonna go ahead and place the right side right on top. Now, before I place the jersey on top, we're gonna use the adhesive spray and we're gonna spray it on top of the tray stitch. 
All right, so now let's get our jersey. Let's go ahead and place it on top. Now this is the important part. You need to make sure that this edge goes along with the edge of the tray stitch. All right, so now that we have it right there where we want it, I want to make sure that I flatten out the rest so that it's nice and flat in there. Now for a little extra stability, I'm going to use these pins and I'm going to place them all around this side here. So I'm grabbing the side of the hoop, I'm going to place it right in there. And some on the bottom. Now since this came out, just be careful with the rest of the needles because it will go back in. So once it goes back in, you don't want this to move its placement. So just be careful and try to go behind the needles. Try not to lose placement at all times. All right, so now we have our jersey on top of the stabilizer. We use the adhesive spray to hold it in place. And we also use the pins. And lastly, we made sure that it's not going to get caught with the needles once it goes back in. Now, the next thing we have to do is bring it back to its placement and we're going to basically redo the whole thing. And let's go back to the original startup point of the design. So let's go ahead and click original. All right, so now the most important part is tracing, okay? So what we're gonna do is make sure that needle number one, which is the one that traces, goes right in the middle of the buttons. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that we've traced the outer edges of the design, let's press the exact trace feature so that we can see exactly where it's gonna go by. So the most important thing we're looking at here is that the needle goes a little bit past the edge of the jersey. So this way, when it grabs a stabilizer, it kind of cuts itself and it makes a border around that edge. So let's go ahead and do that now. So as you can see here, we're a little bit past this edge so we're pretty good here. All right, so let's do a little recap of what we just did here. The first thing is that we traced horizontally to make sure that the outer edges are going to be in the middle of the two buttons. And we traced vertically to make sure that the needle is a little bit past the edge so that it can nicely cover that area. So we're pretty much set. Let's go ahead and press the start button. All right, so this step is completed. Now we know where we have to put the felt. So as you can see here, it made the tray stitch. So let's put the felt right on top. All right, so let's see how much we're actually gonna be using here. Let's cut it about right here. Okay, so we got the felt on top. Let's go ahead and press the start button. Alrighty, so we have the tack down stitch done. Now let's get to cutting. Now here you wanna be a little bit precise. You wanna go in as much as you possibly can. So if I need to go anywhere inside and get as close as possible, I can do it with this. So this is the tedious part of the job and it is a little time consuming but this is where you can charge the price to do something this difficult. So let's go ahead and press the start button now that we cut all the edge off. All right, so now we have the border already embroidered. Now let's get the white felt and do the same thing. Now in this one, we will not need a tray stitch because this is basically already the tray stitch. So let's go ahead and cut it up. Okay, so we have the white felt on top. It's covering everything, let's press start. Right, so now we have the last tack down stitch. Let's go ahead and get to cut.
Okay, so now we're done cutting the white felt. Now let's go ahead and do the border. Let's press start, and that's pretty much it. All right, it's completed. It looks great. That's exactly what we're aiming for. Now we have to do the same process to the other side. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we take off the hoop, get our stabilizer. Once again, we're using the two sheets. Place it on top. Just gonna hold it down, nice and smooth. Let's go ahead and put it inside. Okay, so now that we have the hoop inside, let's go ahead and press the start button so it can do the tray stitch. Okay, so I got my spray. Let's go ahead and spray on over on the stabilizer. All right, so now let's do the same thing. Let's just get the other side and we're gonna put it right on. Now in here, you're gonna guide yourself by the holes. You're not gonna guide yourself by the buttons, but you still wanna be in the center of the holes. Okay, let me get my pins and the last one on top. All right, so let's go ahead and bring the frame in and let's trace. Okay, so we got it where we need it to be. Let's go ahead and press the start button so we can get the tray stitch and then continue. All right, we got our blue felt for the background. Let's put it right on top where this tray stitch is. As you can see, we're covering on the top, on the side, bottom, perfect. And let's press start. Okay, we're ready to start trimming around. Let's do that. Okay, we're done cutting this. Let's go ahead and press start so it can start embroidering the border. So we have the background done with the border. Let's go on and move on to the next step, which is the letters. Let's put on the felt right on top and press the start button. Okay, the tack down stitch on the letters is done. Now let's get to my favorite part. Okay, so we're done cutting around the letters. Let's go ahead and make the border now. All right, so it's all done. Let's go ahead and take a look at it and see how it came out. Now this is easy, you could just pull it off. Make sure you take your pins out. And then since we're using tearaway, you could just rip it off. Looks like it's matching and looks pretty good, but we still gotta clean it up. Let me show you how to do that now. Okay guys, so to clean it up is very simple. We're gonna be using the lint roller to get all the lint out, and we're gonna be using the lighter to burn the edge. So with the lint, I'm just gonna go over it. It's pretty good. Now with the lighter, we're gonna go all around this edge. All right, so what this does is that it brings all your threads nice and tight inside. So like that, it makes it look like we use a sewing machine. And now you're gonna do the same thing to the other side. You guys know how to do that. Let's go ahead and take a look at how it came out.
that's it. As you can see, almost anything is possible with your embroidery machine. Designs like this are in high demand and very fashionable if I may say so myself. And keep in mind, make sure when pricing your jerseys to account for the difficulty and time that takes you to complete your project. Now before we go, let's do one last overview of the things to look out for when doing a project like this that I learned along the way. Rather than embroidering the entire design, use the applique process with the felt fabric. Using felt will allow you to use only your embroidery machine since vinyl will need to be cut with a vinyl cutter. Also using applique fabric rather than just stitches will save you time and thread and it also looks great. The next one will be splitting the design in your digitizing software and embroider one side at a time. This will ensure that you can align both of the sides of the jersey and have a clean split down the middle. All right, so jumping into the other one, when digitizing, add space to both sides of the design near the split to make sure that there's enough design to create a proper overlap. After that, utilize a high density border so that it can cover any imperfections left over from the applique fabric or the backing. Lastly, rather than hooping your jersey, place it over top of the stabilizer as indicated by the tray stitch. Hooping your jersey may cause it to shift and your design to not align properly on the split. And there you have it. Remember to like this episode and subscribe for future content just like this. Also remember to follow us on Facebook on our Embroidery and Custom Apparel Mastery group that I've linked in the description below. You can also follow us on Instagram and even TikTok for more fun embroidery content. All right guys, until next time.